everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Jen, also known as Not Like The Others, and this channel's all about friendship bracelets. I make tutorials, I do fun challenges, so if you're into that sort of thing, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Today, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how I made these super cute Game Boy keychains. And I absolutely love making Alpha keychains because they are so much faster to make than a regular Alpha bracelet. And this pattern is great for beginners because it really doesn't take that long to make. It took me about an hour to make one keychain from start to finish. So if you're still kind of new to making friendship bracelets, or alpha patterns, or if you need some help with the color switches, or if you just like having a walkthrough video to not with, then this video is definitely for you. And you can make your Game Boy any color that you like, but today I'm gonna to be showing you how I made this yellow Game Boy keychain. Yellow just so happened to be the keychain that I ended up recording, Plus my brother had a yellow Game Boy growing up, so the yellow one just kind of holds a special place in my heart. And for this keychain, you will need some embroidery floss. I use DMC embroidery floss, but you can use any brand that you like. You'll also need a D-shaped keychain clip. I bought a whole package of these off of Amazon. I will put the link for these in the description below. You'll also need some bobbins, some tape, some scissors, some fabric glue, and an old small paintbrush that you don't mind getting glue on. Plus you'll need a good workspace to work on. I usually like working on the edge of my desk. And before we jump right into the tutorial, I'm gonna be saying things like forward knot, backward knot, forward backward knot, backward forward knot. And if you have no idea what any of these things mean, do not worry, I got you covered. I made a tutorial on this channel that talks about each knot individually in detail. So if you have no idea what any of these knots mean, what any of these words mean, definitely go check out that video first and then come back to this one. I will put the link in the description below or you can just hit the little icon in the corner here. And in that video, I just go over each knot in a little bit more detail. You can see exactly what I'm doing with my hands. I do go over it a little bit in this video, but the other one just has a lot more detail. And with that out of the way, let's just jump right into the tutorial. To find this pattern, head to bracelet.book.com. You're gonna hit patterns, and where it says pattern number here, you're going to type in 34123, and hit apply filters, and then this pattern will come up. You can just click that. And we're gonna be working with this variation here, the yellow Game Boy with the white background. So let's take a closer look at this pattern. We are working with an alpha pattern that has 11 columns and 16 rows. However, I'm going to make a minor adjustment to this pattern. I'm going to add two extra columns onto this pattern one on the far right and one on the far left. And I'm just gonna use these two extra columns to create more negative space around the Game Boy itself. So with these two columns added, we're actually working with 13 columns or 13 base strings in total. I did this because sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult to create a nice straight edge when your color switches are so close to the edge of the pattern. So this is what our new pattern looks like as well as the detailed pattern that we'll be following along with for this tutorial. All right, so I have all of my colors picked out and I've wrapped them all on plastic bobbins. I have white, which I'm going to use for my background color and my base strings. I'm gonna be using this yellow color to make the Game Boy itself. It does look a little bit orange here, but once we get into the tutorial, you'll be able to see it is yellow. We're gonna be using this muted lime green color to create the screen. And again, it doesn't look quite green right now, but once we get into the tutorial, you'll be able to tell it is green. And we're going to use this dark gray to make all of the buttons and details around the screen. So so I'm just going to move these three colors out of the way for now and we're going to start cutting some base strings using our white. So I'm going to go ahead and cut six strands of white at about 16 to 18 inches long. That's going to be more than enough but it's always better to have too much string than too little. So that's why I like to cut my base strings a little longer. Okay, so I've cut my six strands here. They're about 16 inches long, and I'm just gonna go ahead and set those to the side. We're gonna be using them in just a moment. Next, I'm gonna grab my D swivel clip. I think that's what this is called, but we're just gonna be taking one of these clips, and we're gonna take some tape and secure it to the edge of our desk. And I've already secured one down over here. And as you can see, I kind of have this little metal bar hanging over the edge of my desk. And that's just gonna make it easier to attach our base strings. And I've just used two pieces of tape to secure it down so it doesn't swivel and move around 
as we're working. So once your keychain is attached to your desk, you can go ahead and grab your bass strings. And we're just gonna start with one strand. So we're gonna start with one strand. We're going to fold it in half so the ends are lined up evenly. And then we're gonna follow the strand down till we get to the middle, kind of this loop that we've created. We're gonna take the end of the loop, we're gonna feed it behind the bar, and then we're gonna pull the ends through the loop on the other side, just like so. So now we've sort of made this backward lark's head knot, and if you wanna know how to make this knot in a little bit more detail, I will post a video in the description below. And that video talks about all of the knots that we're going to be making today. And then moving on, I'm just gonna grab another strand, and we're gonna repeat that process. I'm gonna fold it in half, so the ends are lined up. I'm gonna take the loop that's in the middle, kind of feed it behind this bar, and then pull the ends through. And then grabbing the next strand, folding the ends in half, so we get this little loop, feeding that loop underneath the bar, pulling the loop down, and then pulling the ends through on the other side. And we're just gonna do this with all of the base strings that we've made, folding them in half, taking the middle, feeding it behind the bar, and pulling the ends through on the other side. And taking our next base string, repeating the same steps, Heating the string through on the other side and pulling the ends through. And then we're going to take the last base string that we've made, feeding it behind the little bar, and then pulling the ends through on the other side. So if we take a look at our pattern and we include the two columns that we've added to each end, we have a total of 13 base strings and the problem is right now I only have 12. So to fix that problem, I'm just going to take my bobbin of white string. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of slack here. I'm gonna give myself about eight inches of slack. And that'll be about the amount of one base string. Because see, with all the strands that we've pre-cut at 16 inches, we've actually created two base strings per lark's head knot. So we're gonna give ourselves eight inches of slack and we're going to create a lark's head knot with one end of this base string still attached to the bobbin. And you'll kind of see what I mean in just a second. So I'm gonna make sure that slack I've given myself is on the inside and the other end that's attached to the bobbin is on the left side. So I'm just gonna create a little loop for myself. Again, I have about eight inches. And just like I did before, I'm going to feed that loop behind the bar and then I'm gonna pull this through, and I'm also going to pull the bobbin through this loop as well. So now when I put my bobbin over to the side, I have 13 base strings that I can work with, and I can start using the string that's still attached to the bobbin as my leading string to start creating my background. So I have my 13 base strings, and then my leading string on my bobbin, which is helping to create this first lark's head knot on the far left. So now I'm gonna go ahead with the first row of my keychain. And I'm gonna start by doing a backwards forwards knot. And again, if you wanna know how I make any of these knots, I will post a video in the description where it talks about each of these knots in detail. So I'm gonna start by creating my backwards four, followed by my forward knot, creating my four and pulling it through just like so. Then I'm going to move on to my next base string and I'm gonna tie a forward knot. And moving to my next base string, I'm gonna make another forward knot. And your base strings might slide around a little bit. That's totally fine, totally normal. You're just gonna grab the next base string and do another forward knot. And 
and the next one we're going to do another forward knot and moving on to the next base string making another forward knot and on to the next base string creating another forward knot And moving on to the next bass string, doing another forward knot. And moving on to the next bass string, making another forward knot. Grabbing the next bass string, again making another forward knot. Grabbing the next bass string, we're making another forward knot. And then grabbing the next bass string, we're doing a forward knot. And when you get to the last bass string on your row, you're going to make a forward backward knot. So we're gonna do our forwards four followed by our backwards four. And just by doing that, we're going to create a nice straight edge on our keychain. So we always just wanna make sure we're making forward backward knots on the far right bass string and backward forward knots on the far left bass string. And that will give us a nice straight edge. Okay, so we've completed the first row of our keychain. We're gonna move on to row number two. And looking at our pattern here, we can see we're going to be going backwards instead of forwards. So staying with our straight edge technique, we're gonna make our forward backward knot on the far right bass string. So forward and backward. And then grabbing the next bass string, we're gonna do a backward knot. And again, we're going to include the two extra columns that we put on this pattern. So I'm going to do one more backward knot. Just like so. So now I'm ready to add in some of my yellow for my Game Boy Color. So I'm just going to move this white leading string behind my base strings. And I'm just gonna move it off to the side, let my bobbin rest on my table, and I can grab my yellow here, take a little bit of slack, and we're just gonna use a little bit of tape to anchor it off to the side. So I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape on the end of my yellow right onto my desk. You're gonna put the yellow behind the three bass strings with the knots you just made. And you can continue with your backwards knots. So we're gonna make a backward knot just on the next bass string. And now we've successfully added in our new color. We're gonna grab the next bass string and do another backward knot. And the next bass string, we're gonna do another backward knot. And in total, we're going to be making seven backward knots. So we've already made three. We're gonna make four more on the next four bass strings. So four, grabbing the next bass string, tying another backward knot. Five, again, grabbing the next bass string doing another backward knot, six, and seven. We're going to grab the next bass string and just tie another backward knot. So now we're ready to switch back over to our white. I'm just going to wrap up some of the slack of the yellow. We're going to move it behind the last three bass strings in this row and we're going to move it up over the white string pulling the white string back down and then I can continue making my backward knot 
on the next bass string. Backward, the next bass string, we're gonna do another backward knot. And then staying with our straight edge technique, we're gonna make a backward forward knot on the last bass string. Backward and forward. Okay, and then we are ready to move on to row number three. Again, we're gonna be making a backward forward knot on the far left bass string. And we're gonna tie one forward knot on the next bass string. And now we need to switch out our colors again. We're gonna use the yellow again. So I'm just gonna move my white leading string that's on my bobbin. We're gonna put it behind these bass strings. Move it up out of the way. We're just gonna place that on our table. And then we can grab the yellow that's kind of sitting up on the left. We're gonna grab the next bass string and we're gonna tie another forward knot. And you can use your thumbs to kind of push the knots up where you want them to be, making sure everything is sitting nicely. So now we're gonna be adding in our gray. So now we're gonna take our yellow, we're gonna put it behind these bass strings, and we're gonna move it over the white, and we're gonna pull the white back down, making sure it's underneath the yellow string. And I'm actually just going to sit this bobbin up out of the way. I'm gonna put it over to the left so it's right out of our way. Then I'm going to grab our gray color. We're gonna give ourselves a little bit of slack. I'm gonna take another piece of tape and I'm going to take the end here. We're gonna feed it behind these three bass strings, but making sure it's over the white leading string. And we're just gonna tape that down to our desk just like we did with the yellow. And now we can come in and start making our forward knots using the gray. So I'm just gonna grab the next bass string and tie a forward knot. And the next bass string, another forward knot. And the next bass string, another forward knot. And the next bass string, tying another forward knot. And again, we're just gonna keep grabbing the next bass string and tying forward knots until we've created seven gray knots. So five, six, and seven. So once you've tied your seventh gray forward knot, you're gonna take your gray leading string and put it behind the last three bass strings in your row. And we're going to move that up over the yellow, set that down on our table, pulling the yellow back underneath so we can continue on the next bass string with another forward knot using the yellow. And now we're gonna finish off this row using some white. So we're gonna put the yellow back behind the bass strings, put it up over the gray, and we're just gonna set the gray down in our laps for now. And then we can grab the white bass string and pull it back over and we can grab the next bass string and tie a forward knot, making sure we're not pulling too tight or it's gonna make the back of your bracelet a little bit warped. So just enough tension so it sits nicely in the row. And then on the far right bass string, we'll do our forward backward knot. And again, just using my thumb to push the knots up so they're all sitting nicely in a row. And then moving on to the next row, we're gonna start with the white, and again, doing our forward-backward knot on the far right bass string. 
So forward and backward. And the next bass string, we're going to do a backward knot with the white. And now we're going to bring our white leading string behind all of these bass strings. And we're going to set it up out of the way over to the left. And then we can pull our yellow back down from the right. We're going to pull it behind the two bass strings we just made knots on. We're going to grab the next bass string in the row and we're going to tie a backward knot. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and wrap up any slack that you have. And we're going to put the yellow behind the rest of our bass strings up over the white. And we're going to pull the white back down. And we're going to move it all the way over to the right so it's not getting tangled with our gray string, which we're going to grab from our laps. And we're going to tie one backward knot using the gray. And then we can take our gray leading string, put it behind our bass strings, bring it up over the yellow, pull the yellow back down and you can just sit that in your lap for now. And now we're going to be adding in our green color so you can take your green bobbin and we're going to make sure it's behind our bass strings and I'm just going to set it up with this yellow that we anchored off a couple rows ago, just like that. And now you can go ahead with your green and we're going to make five backward knots on the next five bass strings. So grabbing my next bass string and tying a backward knot. Grabbing the next bass string. Doing a backward knot. the next bass string, another backward knot. The next bass string, another backward knot. And number five on the next bass string, just doing another backward knot. So now we can take our green, and we're going to move it behind the rest of our bass strings, put it up over the gray, pull the gray back down, and we're going to tie a backward knot using the gray on the next bass string. Okay, then we're going to put our gray behind the rest of these bass strings, put it up over the green, I'm going to bring the green back down and just set it in my lap for now, using my thumb to push up my knots just so they're sitting nicely in the row. Then I can grab my yellow that's sitting in my lap. I'm going to grab the next bass string and we're going to tie another backward knot. And once you're done with that, you can put the yellow behind the last two bass strings in your row, put it up over the gray, Bring the gray back down, sit it in your lap. And now we're going to grab the white that's kind of sitting up over to the right. And we're going to bring it behind these bass strings, but still in front of the green and gray that's sitting in my lap. So I don't know if you can see that. It's behind the bass string, still in front of the two colors sitting in my lap. And we're going to finish off this row, tying a backwards knot. And again, not pulling too tight, not pulling too loose, making sure our knot is sitting nicely in the row. And then staying with our straight edge technique, we're gonna make a backward forwards knot on the far left bass string. So backward and forward. Okay, and then moving on to the next row, we're gonna make our backward forwards knot again. Backward forward. And then we're going to tie a forward knot using the white. I'm going to wrap up any extra slack. And then we're going to move the white 
behind the rest of the bass strings in the row. We're just gonna set it up over to the right. We're gonna grab our yellow that's sitting up over on the left right now. And we're gonna tie another forward knot using the yellow on the next bass string. And now we're gonna move the yellow behind the rest of our bass strings, put it up over the white. We're gonna bring the white back down and we're gonna move it all the way over to the left so it's out of the way. Next, I'm gonna grab my gray, making sure that it's not tangled with the green sitting in my lap. And we're gonna tie a forward knot on the next bass string. We're gonna move the gray behind the rest of our bass strings, put it up over the yellow, bring the yellow back down, and we're just gonna sit it on, on our lap, making sure it's not getting tangled with the green sitting in our lap, which we're going to use next. So you just wanna make sure none of your colors are getting tangled behind your keychain, making sure they're all sitting nice and flat and straight. And then grabbing the next bass string, we're gonna tie another forward knot using the green. And grabbing the next bass string, tying another forward knot. Grabbing the next bass string, tying another forward knot. And a forward knot on the next bass string. And another forward knot on the next bass string. Okay, so we've made our five forward knots using the green. We're gonna move the green behind these bass strings, pull it up over to the right and over the gray. We're gonna pull the gray back down and we're gonna tie a forward knot on the next bass string. Again, making sure we're not pulling too tight. What I like to do sometimes as well is take some of your leading string from the last knot you created. So in this case, I'm gonna pull on the green and I'm just gonna pull a little bit, making sure it's sitting nice and flat in the row. Then I can go ahead and move the gray behind the bass strings, move it up over the green. I'm gonna move the green back down and set it in my lap again and grabbing the yellow pulling it over. So behind the bass strings, but in front of the screen still. And we're gonna tie a forward knot on the next bass string. And then we're gonna move the yellow behind the last two bass strings, move it up over the gray Move the gray back down. And again, just kind of pulling on that leading string a little and setting it down in my lap. Now we can grab the white that's sitting over on the left. We're gonna move it behind the bass strings we've already tied knots on, but still in front of the green and gray that's sitting in our lap. And we're gonna tie a forward knot on the next bass string. and then a forward backward knot on the far right bass string, staying with our straight edge technique. Just like so, and using our thumb to make sure our knots are sitting nicely in the row. And we're ready to move on to the next row. So starting row number six on the far right bass string, again, we're gonna do our forward backward knot using the white. On the next bass string, we're gonna make a backward knot. And we're gonna wrap up any slack that we need to before putting the white behind the rest of our bass strings and moving it over to the left. Then we can grab our yellow sitting up over on the right, pull it behind the bass strings we just tied knots on, and we're gonna make a backward knot on the next bass string.
And then we're gonna move the yellow behind the rest of our base strings, put it up over the white. We're gonna bring the white back down, and we're just gonna move it all the way over to the right so it's out of our way. Then I'm gonna grab the gray, and we're gonna tie a backward knot on the next base string. Then moving the gray behind our base strings up over the yellow, we're gonna bring the yellow back down and just sit it on our lap making sure it's not getting tangled with the green. We're gonna grab our green bobbin here, and we're gonna tie five backward knots on the next five bass strings. And five. And once you're done with your green, you're gonna put it behind your bass strings, move it up over the gray, bring the gray back down, and we're gonna tie another backward knot using the gray on the next bass string. And we're gonna wrap up any slack that we need to, moving the gray behind our three bass strings, up over the green, Pull the green back down onto your lap. We're gonna grab the yellow that's sitting in our lap. Grab the next bass string and we're gonna tie another backwards knot. Moving the yellow behind these two bass strings up over the gray. So we're gonna pull the gray back down and again, making sure it's not getting tangled with our green here, making sure everything stays in order. And then we're gonna grab the white that's up over to the right, and we're gonna put it behind the base strings we just made knots on, but still in front of the two colors sitting in our lap. We're gonna grab the next base string and we're gonna tie a backwards knot. And then for the bass string on the far left to stay with our straight edge technique, we're gonna do a backward forward knot. We are ready to move on to row number seven. And again, with the bass string on the far left, doing our backward forward knot to stay with our straight edge technique and doing a forward knot on the next bass string. We're gonna move the white behind the bass strings and put it up over on the table so it's out of the way. We're gonna bring the yellow back down and we're gonna tie a forward knot on the next bass string. We're gonna move the yellow behind the bass strings over here and we're gonna put it up over the white we can bring the white all the way back over to the left so it's out of the way. And then we're gonna grab our gray, making sure it's not tangled with the green. And we're gonna tie another forward knot on the next base string. And then moving the gray behind the rest of our base strings, moving it up over the yellow and we're gonna bring the yellow back down into our laps, making sure it's not getting tangled with the green. And then we're gonna grab the green and we're gonna tie five forward knots on the next five bass strings. And then we're gonna move the green behind our base strings, move it up over the gray. Then we can bring the gray back down and we can use that to tie another forward knot on the next base string. And then moving the gray behind our base strings, moving it up over the green we're gonna bring the green back down and set it in our laps. And then we can move the yellow back over behind the bass strings in front of the green. 
and we can tie a forward knot on the next bass string. I'm just gonna pull on the gray a little bit here. And once you're done that, you can move the yellow behind the last two bass strings, put it up over the gray. You can pull the gray back down and sit that in our lap, making sure it's not getting tangled with the green. And then we can pull the white all the way back over underneath these bass strings, but still in front of the green and gray. And we're gonna tie a forward knot on the next bass string. And staying with our straight edge technique, tying our forward backward knot on the far right. So once you finish row number seven, we'll actually be done using our green. So I'm just gonna find that green leading string that's still attached to the bobbin and I'm just going to cut it right off. Just so it's out of our way, we're not going to need this anymore. Just wrap up the slack and put it out of the way. All right, moving on to row number eight, we're going to start with our white, doing our forward backward knot on the far right bass string, tying a backward knot on the next bass string, wrapping up any slack we need to before putting it behind the rest of our bass strings and moving it out of the way. Next, we're gonna grab our yellow that's up on the right. We're gonna put it behind the bass strings we just tied knots on. We're gonna tie one backward knot on the next bass string. And once you've tied that, you can move the yellow behind the rest of your bass strings, put it up over the white, bring the white back down, and we're gonna pull it all the way over to the right, set it up on our table so it's out of the way. And then we can go in with our gray string and we're gonna tie seven backward knots on the next seven bass strings. And once you've tied your seventh backward knot in this row with the gray, you can move that behind the last three bass strings on the left. We're gonna move the gray up over the yellow, pull the yellow back down, and we're gonna tie a backward knot on the next bass string using the yellow. And then we can move the yellow behind the last two bass strings, put it up over the gray, pull the gray back down. You can just set that in your lap. And then we're gonna pull the white back over underneath these bass strings, but still in front of the gray. And we're gonna do a backward knot on the next bass string. And then a backward forward knot on the last bass string on the left. The last bass string on the left, that, that's, that's a horror movie right there. Okay, so now we're about halfway through our bracelet. We've finished making the screen of our Game Boy. We're gonna continue with row number nine. So again, on the far left, I'm gonna be making my backward forward knot on the next bass string, just a regular forward knot. And then I can move the white behind the rest of my bass strings and move it up out of the way. Then I'm gonna grab my yellow that's sitting up on the left, and I'm gonna grab the next bass string and tie a forward knot. And we're actually gonna be tying nine forward knots using the yellow. So we have eight more to do on the next eight bass strings. So once you've created your nine forward knots using the yellow, you can move the yellow behind the last two bass strings, move it up over the white, bring the white back down. We're gonna tie a forward knot on the next bass string, not pulling too tight. 
And then on the far right bass string, tying our forward, backward knot. Okay, so now moving on to row number 10, we're going to repeat the last row we just did, but going backwards instead of forwards. So on the far right bass string, we're gonna make our forward, backward knot, and then tying a backward knot on the next bass string, And then we can move the white behind the rest of our bass strings, move it over to the left. And then you can grab the yellow, put it behind the bass strings with the knots that you just made. And now we're going to tie nine backward knots on the next nine bass strings using the yellow. And once you finish making your ninth backward knot using the yellow, you can put your yellow behind the last two bass strings, put it up over the white, bring the white back down, and we're gonna tie a backward knot on the next bass string. And a backward forward knot on the far left bass string. And moving on to row number 11, we're going to start on the far left bass string, again doing the backward forward knot with the white. And tying a forward knot on the next bass string. And then we can move the white behind the rest of our bass strings and move it up onto the table so it's out of the way. And we can pull our yellow back down Tie up any slack that you need to, whatever makes it easier to tie your knots. And we're gonna tie two forward knots on the next two bass strings. So one and two. Then you can move the yellow behind your bass strings, move it up over the white, you're gonna bring the white back down and move it all the way over to the left to set it up on the table so it's right out of the way. And then you can grab the gray that's been sitting on your lap for a while now, tie up any slack you need to, or wrap up any slack, I should say. And we're gonna tie another forward knot using the gray on the next bass string. So now we're starting to create the buttons on the Game Boy. So you're gonna bring the gray behind the bass strings, put it up over the yellow, bring the yellow back down, and we're gonna tie four forward knots using the yellow on the next four bass strings. Then you're gonna put the yellow behind these bass strings, put it up over the gray. We're gonna bring the gray back down and we're gonna tie a forward knot on the next bass string using the gray. And then we can move the gray behind the last three bass strings, put it up over the yellow, bring the yellow back down and we're gonna tie another forward knot on the next bass string. Moving that behind the last two bass strings, moving it up over the gray, bringing the gray back down, and setting that on our laps. And then we can grab the white that's sitting over on the left we're gonna pull it behind the bass strings we just tied knots on, but making sure it's still in front of the gray that's sitting in our laps. And we're gonna tie a forward knot. And then on the far right bass string, tying a forward backward knot to stay with our straight edge technique like so. Okay, moving on to row number 12, we're gonna start again by doing our forward-backward knot on the far right bass string using the white. 
So forward, backward. And on the next bass string, doing a backward knot. And we're gonna move the white behind the bass strings and put it up over to the left. Then we can pull our yellow back down that's sitting on the right. And we're gonna tie two backward knots using the yellow on the next two bass strings. And then we're gonna move the yellow behind the bass strings, put it up over the white. Bring the white back down and we're gonna set it all the way over to the right. Then we're gonna take our gray that's sitting in our lap, take the next bass string and we're gonna tie another backward knot. And then I'm just going to move the gray behind the bass strings, put it up over the yellow. We're gonna bring the yellow back down and we're gonna tie two backward knots using the next two bass strings. and two and then swapping out for the gray again we're going to move the yellow behind the bass strings up over the gray pull the gray back down and we're going to tie three backward knots on the next three bass strings using the gray so backward backward and backward and you're just going to move the gray behind your bass strings put it up over the yellow bring your yellow back down and we're going to make another backward knot using the yellow on the next bass string okay then we're going to move the yellow behind the bass strings put it up over the gray and the gray is just gonna come back down, sit on our laps. And then we can grab the white. We're gonna bring it behind all of these bass strings, but still in front of the gray. And we're gonna tie a backward knot. Followed by a backward forward knot on the far left bass string. And again, starting off the next row using our backward forward knot. And you can really see this nice straight edge that that technique is giving us. And on the next bass string, we're gonna tie a forward knot. And you're gonna put the white behind these bass strings, put it up over to the right. And we're going to grab our yellow string and tie two forward knots using the yellow. And then you can move the yellow behind your bass strings, put it up over your white, bring the white back down and move it all the way over to the left, set it up on your table so it's out of the way. Then you're gonna grab your gray and you're gonna tie one forward knot using the gray. And this is the last knot we'll have to make using this color. You can move the gray behind the rest of your bass strings, move it up over the yellow Bring the yellow back down, wrap up any slack that you need to, and I'm also just going to pull on this string kind of sitting behind here to make sure everything's sitting nicely. And then I'm going to tie six forward knots on the next six bass strings using the yellow. Okay, once you've tied your six forward knot using the yellow, you can move the yellow behind your last two bass strings, move it up over the gray, and we can bring the gray back down into our lap. And I'm actually just gonna cut it right now. So just cut that right off. And then you can wrap up any of the slack that you have left with your gray and move it over to the side. And then we can come back in with our white, pull it behind our bass strings, 
and we're going to tie a forward knot on the next bass string, followed by a forward backward knot on the far right bass string. And moving on to row 14, we're going to start on the far right bass string using our forward backward knot. And the next bass string, a backward knot. Now we're gonna wrap up any slack and move the white behind the rest of your bass strings, move it over to the left. And then we're gonna pull our yellow back down under our bass strings. And we're gonna go across with nine backward knots on the next nine bass strings. And number nine, backward knot on the next bass string. And then you can move your yellow behind your last two bass strings up over the white. Bring the white back down. And we're gonna tie a backward knot on the next bass string. And a backward forward knot on the bass string on the far left. And moving on to row 15, again, we're going to do our backward forward knot on the far left bass string. And we're going to tie a forward knot on the next bass string. And another forward knot on the next bass string. Then we can move our white behind the rest of our bass strings. Put it up on the table. Then we're gonna grab our yellow from the left, making sure it's behind these three bass strings here. And we're going to tie seven forward knots using the yellow on the next seven bass strings. We're going to move the yellow behind these last three bass strings up over the white, pull the white back down. We're going to tie a forward knot on the next bass string, another forward knot on the next bass string, and then a forward backward knot on the far right bass string. So now I can go ahead and cut this yellow string now that we are done making our Game Boy pattern. And now we're just going to finish off the background of the keychain. We're going to go ahead with our forward backward knot on the far right using the white. And then I'm going to do backward knots all the way across excluding this far left bass string. And then when I get to this far left bass string, I'm gonna do my backward forward knot. And I think I'm going to do one more row of just white. So I'm gonna start with my backward forward knot on the far left. And then I'm gonna go all the way across with forward knots, excluding that far right bass string while I where I will tie my forward backward knot. And then when I get to the far right bass string, I'm just going to tie my forward backward knot. 
And then I'm officially done tying my pattern. I have my cute little Game Boy on my keychain now. Now I'm actually going to cut this white bobbin off of my keychain, just like so. And you can tie this off any way that you like to. You can just tie a simple knot by gathering all of the base strings and then tying a knot to secure your pattern. I like to do something a little bit different. I like to tie gathering knots at the end of my patterns. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna lift up all of this tape that I've put on my desk here. Okay, so once I've taken off all the tape here, I can actually take my keychain off of my desk. I'm actually just going to flip it around. This is what the back looks like. And I'm just gonna take another little piece of tape and I'm just gonna secure my keychain back down to the edge of my desk, just so I can work on the other side. So in order to make my gathering knot, I'm just gonna take a little bit of my yellow string here. You don't need too much. I've cut just about 12 inches here and that's going to be more than enough. You're just going to gather all of your base strings and you want to kind of pinch your fingers right where you want your gathering knot to start. And again, if you want any more detail about any of the knots that I'm making, I will put a video in the description below where I talk about each knot individually in a little bit more detail. So I'm pinching my base strings here. I'm going to take one end of my yellow string and I'm just going to feed it up just like this. And then using the bottom half, I'm gonna create sort of a loop here, just like so. So I have my loop, I have some slack at the top, and then I have all of this string as well. And using the long piece of string, I'm gonna start wrapping that around my base strings. I'm just gonna wrap a few times here, making sure everything's nice and tight making sure everything's sitting nice and evenly. I'm just gonna keep wrapping, just like so. And once your gathering knot is a width that you think you would like it at, you can just take your end and feed it through the loop that you created at the bottom of your gathering knot. So it should look something like this. You have your loop at the bottom, you have the end that you've been wrapping fed through that loop, and then you still have your slack sitting at the top that's also been wrapped in that yellow thread. So then you're just gonna pull on that top string and you can see the loop starting to go through. And then you can just pull it so the knot is sitting underneath all of those wraps you've created and then you can pull each side of the knot so it's sitting nice and tight. And then you can actually push this up as well if you want your base string sitting a little bit more tightly. Once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and cut off the ends of your gathering knot, just like so. And then you can also cut your excess base strings. You can cut mine about here. I have about five inches left over on my base strings, but again, it's always better to have too much than too little. Okay, then I can go ahead and remove the tape. And this is what my keychain looks like now. I'm gonna flip it back over and I'm just gonna start cutting all of these strings that are sticking out on the back. So we're just gonna cut them off. And yeah, now that all of my strings are cut on the back, I'm gonna go in with this fabric glue and I'm just going to glue them all down. And I'm just gonna take an old paintbrush that I use to do this all the time. I'm just gonna take a little bit of glue here and we're just going to glue it down. then you're just gonna wait a few hours for that to dry completely before you attach that to any of your keys, your wallets, your purses, whatever you're going to be attaching this to. 
But now we have a super cute Game Boy keychain. I love the way that this turned out. And again, you can make your Game Boy any color that you like, and since they are so quick to make, why not make one in every color? And that is all for today's video. Looking back, I wish I had picked a color that had a bit more contrast with that muted lime green color that we're using for the screen, but I didn't really realize how similar the colors were until I was about halfway done editing the tutorial already. So I do apologize if it got a little confusing in some places. I really appreciate you hanging in there, and I really do hope that this tutorial was helpful. And with that, I will post all of my socials in the description below if you want to follow me on Instagram or TikTok, and leave me any video ideas you'd like to see me make in the future down in the comments, or if you have any questions, I will answer them to the best of my ability. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, be sure to hit subscribe. I hope you drink some water today, I hope you have your favorite snack today, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!